The stage is set for Major League Baseball's 2021 World Series. This year's matchup will feature some familiar faces as well as some newcomers to the big stage. Hello and welcome back to Penn State Sports Night. I'm Brendan Conroy alongside Chris Lemo and Logan Brandis. And today we will give our thoughts and predictions for the World Series as we head into game one this week. So Chris and Logan, Atlanta's come in hot. They are ready to go in this World Series. What do we think we need to see from them if they want to get the win? Yeah, and I think the big thing with Atlanta was just how hot this offense has been despite Ronald Acuna Jr. being out for a good portion of the second half. Acuna, he has been this generational player at a young age for this uh, Braves roster, so filling in for his spot is definitely going to be tough, and the Braves did that. They traded at the deadline for guys like Eddie Rosario, Jock Peterson, Jorge Soler at the trade deadline. And it's been Eddie Rosario who's had a really hot streak in this postseason. He was traded from Cleveland for Pablo Sandoval, who got instantly cut. So they got this a uh, NLCS MVP for free, which, I mean, that's a pretty good deal in the trade deadline world. So the Braves, they've been heavy, heavily reliant on those guys coming in. And then they had guys like Freddie Freeman, Ozzy Albies, who have been on this team for the long term. And it's continue to do, their, to, to do their thing offensively. So the Braves really need to rely on those guys, on those bats, to uh, make a good run at the World Series. It's pretty crazy. I mean, you just look at this from a financial standpoint. The Dodgers spent about, what, $250 million on their payroll. They lost to a guy in Eddie Rosario that Cleveland paid Atlanta to take him and cut the guy that they got for him. I mean, it's incredible. That's just the kind of bargain hunting that Atlanta did at this deadline, and it worked out phenomenally. I mean, same with they traded Alex Duvall. They got him for a backup catcher. Jock Peterson for a guy that isn't even a top 30 prospect in Chicago's system. They, their GM should be very proud of what he did there at the deadline because he single-handedly replaced Acuna, who, I'm, I mean, I'm going to speak for myself and probably a lot of other people, he's pretty near close to irrepla irreplaceable. I mean, he's a guy that is a perennial MVP candidate. I mean, I said on a certain podcast, the Top Prospects podcast, that they were out of it. I mean, I thought it was a two-horse race with the Phillies and Mets, and guess what? Neither of those teams are still around, and the Braves are. Eddie Rosario did some things in that league championship series that, quite honestly, nobody has done. He had two four-hit games. I mean, that when the spotlight turned on, he carried that team. It wasn't Austin Riley. Freddie Freeman, yes, he's great. We all know about him and Ozzie Albies. But it was Eddie Rosario that carried them. Can he keep that up? I don't know. But that really reflects on management. Management did a great job. They saw that the, the division was winnable, even without Acuna. They went for it at the deadline, and look at them now. Yeah, exactly. And I, I don't think that Halloween is going to be the scariest thing this week once we see Atlanta's pitching. I think they're ready, and uh, I think they're ready to take on a team like Houston. Let's take a look at the American League. The Houston Astros are making their third appearance in the past five seasons. They are more than familiar with the pressure that late October baseball brings. So with that being said, what do you think they're going to need to do to secure that, 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 that title and once again hoist a banner to their city of Houston? Well, first of all, this uh, Astros team just isn't going away despite all the cheating issues that they've had to deal with these past few years. Now they're back in the World Series. And just like Eddie Rosario for the, um, the, for the Braves, Jordan Alvarez has been exactly that for the Houston Astros, carried them through that ALCS victory over the Red Sox, uh, you know very well. But the issue with the Astros is their pitching staff. Lance McCullers Jr., who has kind of carried that staff, he has been their ace of the pitching staff so far this postseason. He's going to be out for the World Series due to a forearm issue, and the rest of the staff has not looked that great. Uh, they have Framber, Framber Valdez and Zach Ranke who have struggled uh, throughout the playoffs thus far, so they need to uh, get better performance out of those guys. The bullpen has been very reliable so far during the postseason, but they need more because McCullers, he's a big name. He's not going to be there this series, so the Astros are going to have to rely on more than just the hit, amazing hitting of Jordan Alvarez to really come out on top in this series. Yeah, you know, I mean, to compare them to kind of a Star Wars reference, everybody thinks the Yankees are the Death Star. That's the Astros. I mean, I personally don't mind a good villain story, so we'll have to see how this plays out. But yes, I mean, they know that they're hated on across America, but Dusty Baker deserves this. I think he's been a phenomenal manager, and quite honestly, I didn't think that anybody would be able to right the ship in Houston and kind of get them through all this turmoil, and he has. He has done an amazing job keeping his guys focused there despite playing in a really harsh environment everywhere they go every single night. 
Now, as far as this team, the bullpen's going to have to carry them. The starting pitching, like Logan said, isn't there. They don't have Verlander anymore. They don't have a lot of those old guys, Garrett Cole, another one from past playoff runs. They're all gone. But the bullpen has been really good, and I think they stack up against Atlanta's trio of lefties that they have that have been phenomenal. Not only that, but I think the lineup for Houston, I give them a bit of an edge over Atlanta. And I know it's been the Yuli and Jordan show so far, those who kind of carried them in the league championship series. But Bregman, Correa, and Altuve are too good to have another down series. And they've been here before. I know Freddie Freeman has the kind of experience around the league, but those Braves are really young. And I think you can't underestimate the World Series experience that the entirety of this Astros lineup has. Yeah, and these Astros, they might be the villain, but they're still winning. So obviously they're doing something right. Something's working for them. They're going to be prepared when they come into this series. My question for you gentlemen is it's time. Two teams left. It all comes down to this week. Who do you guys have hoisting a banner for this year's World Series? My prediction, I'm going with the Braves. I think they'll close this one out in around six games or so, and it'll close one of the greatest underdog stories, really, that we've seen in the past couple of years. And it shows just how winnable or just how the NL East really could have come on top if the Braves, if the uh, Mets and Phillies, excuse me, didn't really kind of stumble on themselves and kind of knock themselves out of the race. But the Braves, they have been dominant throughout this postseason run, and it's really uh, in part due to their rotation. We talked about how lackluster the Astros' rotation was outside of Lance McCullers Jr., but their big three of Charlie Morton, Ian Anderson, and Max Fried, they all have ERAs below four right now, and in three of those four wins against the Dodgers, the Dodgers scored t- two or less runs in all three of those games and they shut out the Brewers twice as well in the NLDS so this rotation has been kind of carrying them so far through this uh through this playoff run so far. And we talked about how great the lineup was. We talked about how great Eddie Rosario was. And uh, and Austin Riley, by the way, having an MVP-type season, he has had a great resurgence in Atlanta so far this year. And I think they'll close it out by hoisting that World Series title. Yeah, you know, I saw the MLB post something. It was uh, captioned from Jay-Z. It said, Jackson, Tyson, Jordan, Game 6. That's right. I'm going Jordan Alvarez carrying them again in Game 6. And I think they're going to bring the trophy back to Houston. I This lineup is just too talented. Atlanta does have great pitching. I really do believe that they have the starting pitching edge over Houston. But the problem is, is that they don't really lengthen their pitchers out. A lot of times they go five-ish innings. And I know Atlanta's bullpen has been good. I just don't know if they'll be good enough against Houston in that lineup. And I do think Houston Stars are going to get going this series. I mean, you could say the same, of course, about Austin Riley and some of them. But as as I said before a couple minutes ago, I don't think you can underestimate World Series experience. When the bright, when the shine, when the bright, when the lights shine bright, I don't think you can count them out. And this Braves team, and I do think they'll be back in this position for many years to come. But the Astros have that experience right now, and that's why I'm taking them in six. And I think this time next week we'll be doing this segment with our Air Jordans on, and they'll be hosting a parade through downtown Houston. Well, I hope one of you guys are right. It really does seem like a battle of offense versus defense. And you know what they say, defense wins championships. I hope we can see a little underdog Cinderella story coming for us in the future. But this week will definitely tell us uh, which team of the 2021 season really had it all in their bag. Can Houston once again dominate and get the job done, or can Atlanta push through and write its own fairy tale story? Emotions will be running high this week as Game 1 will take place in Houston this Tuesday. That's all we have for this edition of Penn State Sports Night. Stay tuned for weekly updates on your favorite sports. For Chris Lemo and Logan Brandis, I'm Brendan Conroy. Thank you and have a great night. Thank you for watching this edition of Penn State Sports Night. If you're a fan of our content, please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more clips. Also, follow us on Twitter at PSSN TV and on Instagram at PSU Sports Night to keep up with all the action. For all my colleagues, we are Penn State Sports Night.